All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to take this three handle tub and shower valve and we're going to replace it with a single handle tub and shower valve. Uh, we're going to update it, uh, upgrade. Uh, I know a lot of us are familiar with these, a lot of older people like myself are familiar, familiar with the three handle tub and shower valve. Well, if you notice a lot of new homes and stuff that are being built and have been built now have single handle tub and shower valves, that's because the uh, laws have changed. Uh, these are actually a hazard because if a child or a senior citizen would to go or to go and just turn on the uh, hot water itself they could burn themselves pretty bad so they've talked about that and they've changed the law and make it a single handle because the single handle all most single handles are going to come in a positive temp meaning it's going to balance the hot and the cold out you'll still get a sufficient amount of hot water but not hot enough to where someone can just go in there and just burn themselves Now sometimes these handles can be difficult to get off and uh, since this is not being used anymore I'm just go ahead and break this right off here and get it out the way. Uh, it's a lot faster than trying to uh, fight with the screwdriver and the screw stripped. And these are the escutcheons uh, that I'm pulling off. And what I mean by escutcheons, the, uh, these are the uh, decorative pieces. The trim, the tub and shower trim. Another thing I like you guys to keep in mind is that this wall here, this house, I mean, this house was built very strong it's like a bomb shelter that wall right there that you're looking at is very thick that's the old uh, touch about pulling off it's very thick and uh, the only way I'm going to uh, tackle this rather than to remodel this bathroom because it would cost a fortune to uh, remodel it the way that it's uh, this house has been built <coughs> and I don't think the homeowner is going to go for that so anyway I'm going to uh, slowly chip around and make it to where I can uh, get the new valve in there and they make a cover plate and I'll show you that the cover plate is going to cover any of the uh, damage that I make uh, to put the new uh, valve in now before I pull a valve out like this I always remove the handles and the stems because it makes it easy to pull it out from the back Well, look like uh, someone's been back here working before at one time, making some repairs. And you can see how thick, how cemented that wall is. It's, like I said, this house was built back in the uh, 50s. And those are the unions that I just uh, took loose. 
And these are a set of tub wrenches with a different uh, assorted sizes. This is uh, also good for uh, tub and shower stem replacements and repairs. So it's good to have this set because you're going to have various sizes. And again, I'm going to pull the stems off to make it easier for me to pull it out from the back. I had to put a little muscle into that one. Now, if you just wanted to repair this uh, faucet, you would just take that stem up to. Uh, your local hardware store or Home Depot and just match it up. But uh, this homeowner is going to, uh, they're going to sell this home so they want to kind of upgrade it and uh, with the new uh, tub and shower valve in place would help. This is going to be the uh, cover plate. This is going to be the decorative part to cover all the holes. The bigger the the hole that I make, is, which is going to be a little larger, to uh, get the valve in there. So that's going to cover it up. I know a lot of people are watching this video, and they're probably saying, "Yeah, probably need to replace the whole wall." But uh, again, that is a big expense, and I don't think that's what the homeowner was shooting for at this time. Did you? Ideally, yes, that would be a perfect time to uh, renovate this bathroom. But again, you see how thick these walls are and the other walls. You can only imagine what a contractor would come in there and uh, charge the model. And I'm sure that's what the uh, homeowner was looking at. If they haven't had a bid on, a, on it already. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is uh, just to get this part out, I'm just heating this solder connection up so that it'll just drop right out of here. 
uh, since this riser, the riser meaning the part going up to the shower head itself, is kind of wedged in there pretty good. We're going to try to uh, use that over rather than tearing the whole house up just to get up in there to get to it. Tell you a little trick that I'm doing here to keep from cracking the entire wall is that I work from the inside out. It makes it a lot easier to uh, chip it off in pieces because if you try to start from the outside, you can do some real damage. This is a real cement wall. <laughs> So sure? well, I guess you see how the uh, plate's going to cover the uh, any imperfections that's left. Most people uh, today in a lot of homes today, you don't really have to worry as much about uh, this wall being as thick because now most homes, what are uh, Drywall, sheetrock. And maybe some are back of the work, which is uh, pretty easy to cut out. And this is going to be the new single-handle tub and shower faucet. The valve itself. And this is a mowing, made by mowing. And I've been doing this for many years, 30 plus years. Most plumbers that I knew know they love this uh, this valve. It's very easy and versatile. It's as far as repairs, you just pull out the cartridge and replace it you're done there's nothing complicated about it it's simply made and it's made well and I just pulled the retainer pin that pin holds the uh, cartridge in which I'm gonna pull out and the reason that I am pulling this cartridge out because I'm about to solder some copper pieces to this and I don't want to take any chances on uh, 
damaging the uh, cartridge with the heat. And you've already seen me pull the uh, retention out, so the retention uh, pin out. Uh, once that's pulled out, this cartridge has just come right. See how it just comes right up out of here? It, it, it takes a little work, but once you get it out. And if you need to replace it in the future, this is all you need to do. This is all this particular uh, valve needs for as uh, repairs, a new cartridge. And it has, this is the up, that means that's going to be the part where the uh, shower head is going to be. So it's pretty much explanatory when you start to put it in. It's kind of hard to put it in backwards, but you can if you're not paying attention. And I have ran into that before where people have put it on backwards. And all of the outlets here on this valve is half inch. And this is a half inch cleaning brush that I'm using to uh, clean it up real good. And you notice once I clean the inside of it, I kind of hit the uh, top. Though that's set so that uh, when I do solder, that solder will uh, seal around the top as well. And this is the flux I use. This is a no corrode flux. As a matter of fact, uh, all of the things that you do see in this video, as far as plumbing is concerned, you can go to my uh, Amazon How To Plumbing Store, and uh, you can find everything that I have on all my videos at that store, and you can purchase it there. It's important that you use flux. If you don't use flux, uh, the uh, solder will not uh, merge the two metals together and seal them. Okay, we got a little more uh, cement to move out the way. This is uh, this looks like a repair someone made uh, some time ago. So we're just going to remove that uh, compression fitting 
and we're gonna just uh, solder a new piece on there uh, and these are small what we call mini cutters uh, it helps when you're in little tight spots like this here mini tubing cutters you notice each time I make a turn or two I uh, stop and I crank down on the little wheel right there This is some emery cloth. Uh, this is a fiberglass emery cloth that I use. What I like about this, you can use it. Uh, it get wet, and it's still effective. When you use a regular emery cloth that's made like sandpaper, once it's wet, it kind of starts to destroy it. But uh, this uh, fiberglass stuff, it's good stuff. And flux. And some of the things I, I, I say on here, I might say it redundantly. And that's just in case that's a part of a video that, uh, you know, some people miss part of a video. So I just kind of back myself up and cover that and these are the brackets that's going to uh, hold the uh, cover plate in place and this goes on before the valve is uh, installed at least in this case Now we've got the uh, cover plate in place. And right here is where the, uh, of course, the spout's going to go. And uh, the cover plate is really kind of big, so it's going to be kind of tight spot. It's going to fit right, just about fit right in there. And if you need a cover plate like this one, again, you can go to my uh, Amazon how-to plumbing store and uh, you can pick one of those up. Okay, now I'm going to uh, take the valve and I'm going to prep it. I mean, I'm going to get it together and get it ready to go in place so that it's all set up. And I'm going to do most of the work out here on the floor where I have access to it. Now this particular uh, tub and shower here that I'm installing, uh, I, I don't run into this a lot but again this wall is so thick it's a cement wall that I'm gonna have to use uh, at least eight uh, 90 degree elbows uh, copper half inch uh, and a few of them are gonna be street and I'm gonna show you the difference between the, the one that's a street And of course we're going to need some couplings, always couplings, half inch couplings. If you're deciding to uh, take on a job like this or run into a situation like this, all of them are not going to turn out the way that this one here is turning out. Again, this is an older home, so I have to do a little modification to get the uh, 
turbine shower valve in line and that's where these 90 degree elbows are coming in place so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, clean up these uh, elbows okay this half inch uh, copper 90 is a uh, this is a street 90 and what we mean by a street 90 is one end is the same size as the pipe itself it, it would go inside of a fitting and the other side has a hub that the pipe would go inside of it instead Now I've got everything cleaned up and fluxed and ready to put together. And what I'm doing here now is a little trick that uh, a lot of plumbers use. Is I'm kind of egg shaping the uh, fitting so that when I do push it in place it won't swivel back and forth as easy. And it will stay nice and stable when I go to uh, solder it. And I start piecing it together as you see now. So I'm going to do all the... Uh, elbows that way to uh, make it nice and stable now you see what I uh, was talking about to uh, what I had to do to modify it to bring it out so that when I do make the attachment from the other side I have enough of the valve sticking out where I can uh, catch it with the uh, screws and install the handle on well you can see right here that I pretty much have it all just about together I did solder a few pieces on there but I didn't completely solder up at the top of the valve as you can see right there that's because I'm still gonna uh, try to do a little more adjustment if it needs to be okay now it's all soldered up everything's tightened in place now I'll start putting the uh, shower valve back together itself with the uh, stem right here of course the uh, cartridge and again the trim the decorative pieces very important once you put this cartridge in this is an important part of the video right here make sure that you put the retainer pin in that's going to hold the cartridge in place Now, if I had had put this uh, shower valve in without all those 90s, it wouldn't protrude out far enough for me to catch this uh, trim work here. This is the point I want. This is what I wanted to point out to you guys. It would have set back too far to uh, install the trim work and the handle itself.
that part right there you just see me put in that you can actually control the uh, hot and cold the uh, how much hot you get out of it and how much cold you'll get out of it you can kind of uh, preset it uh, most cases I don't worry about it because it's pretty much set to uh, normal for everyone but uh, you do have some people that want really hot water and they might want to make an adjustment on it thing about hot water uh, keep in mind is that too hot water is not that good for your uh, plumbing system it starts to expand and make your uh, washers expand and contract uh, therefore uh, limited to life expectancy of it uh, I've go I go to many homes where uh, I end up replacing this cartridge because the customer has the hot water on and up too high and it's just burning up and uh, melting the uh, rubbers inside of it so keep that in mind uh, too much hot water is not really that good for the plumbing And this is the tub spout. This is a universal, what they call a universal tub spout. You can use this for either or if you're going to slip it over copper pipe or if you're going to uh, screw it on to a metal adapter that's coming out the wall or galvanized pipe or whatever. Uh, we're going to use it to slip over the copper pipe today. So we're just going to slide it up there and you've seen the uh, spot where you tighten the Allen wrench, Allen screw. So, again, we just slide it. There's an O-ring to protect it from leaking from the back. And once we get it into a decent place, I take the Allen wrench and tighten down on the Allen screw and twist it into its final spot. Only thing left to do is put the new shower head on and we're done. Actually, that shower head's better than the new one that I'm about to put on. But, homeboy wanted everything new.